Last night's presidential debate is leading to big questions this morning over the race and the future of our country. The candidates spent the night beating up on each other, and even when they tried to talk substance, it quickly devolved into all-out name-calling, including this exchange over changing the tax code. Why didn't you do it over 20, uh, the no, last no, no, 25 wait, no, years? Let's, because let's, you were president. Why did you do it over because the last you weren't president years. screwing no, no, things no. up. You were a senator. And You're by the, the worst way, you president vice... America has <laughs> ever had. Hey, hey, Come Joe, on. Let me, let me just tell you, Joe. I've done more in in 47 months. I've done more than you've done in 47 years, Joe. We've done things that you never even thought of doing, okay. including Gentlemen, fixing the broken military that you gave me, let's, including let's, taking care we're of your talking, vets. Mr. President, we're talking about the economy. Okay, then. Uh, Jason Grumet heads up the Bipo Bipartisan Policy Center, and he joins us now. Jason, uh, certainly we could all agree last night was uh, really an all-out disaster. What do you think this means uh, for the fate of the stimulus talks, which did renew this week? You know, just looking at it through the prism of the stock market, we're seeing a remarkable reversal today. Perhaps on, on some optimism, this stimulus gets passed. Yeah, Brian, you know, I think it's a, it's a good insight, and it's good to be with you. Um, you know, there's been this big argument about whether, you know, Congress is going to kind of step up and assert its Article One authority, right, not keep delegating all of its powers to the executive branch. And if, if last night showed us anything, it's Congress better step up, right? I actually think it did provide a little bit of impetus for Pelosi and the White House to think about trying to get something done, because this is probably our last shot, right? It certainly doesn't look like the lame duck is going to be a productive period for legislation. And I think as we Heard last night the uncertainty about when, in fact, we're going to understand who the government is and accept who the government is could also extend for a while. So I think it actually, not that we needed any more imperative, but I think it added even a little more urgency. Um, but it's going to probably come down to the next 36 hours. I and mean, this is the last window of opportunity they have to find some space between the, you know, one and three trillion dollar negotiating positions. Jason, was there anything that you heard last night that makes you think the two sides can work together, that there are some issues that are bipartisan. In the past, we've seen them talk about infrastructure um, and, and trying to fight uh, COVID-19. Are those two areas that you think going forward could be bipartisan? So look, you know, the, the best thing to do about last night is just shake it off, right? It was, I think, the extension of what has been an unfortunate kind of unraveling of our deliberative discussion for the last several months. But yes, fundamentally, Congress can still govern a divided nation. I think you're absolutely right. You know, infrastructure has been the best idea that never happens. If you do the kind of after action report on the first six months of the Obama presidency, first six months of the Trump administration, I think most people would say they should have done infrastructure. And so I believe that there is really some movement there. There was legislation that moved through the Senate on a bipartisan basis to try to advance the surface transportation system. And there was a pretty decent agreement there on how you accelerate permitting and try to invest more in kind of green decarbonization technology. So I think the impetus for infrastructure is there. Healthcare, healthcare, healthcare. Yes, there is going to be an opportunity to invest in our public health systems. I think that um, we'll obviously see if Biden is president, more of an effort to kind of reform and strengthen the Affordable Care Act. If Trump gets a second term, I honestly don't think we know what's going to happen. Um, but yes, I think healthcare, infrastructure, tax code investments for earned income tax credits, and child tax credit. I mean, there's a number of things that even this Congress can, I think, get together behind. Jason, from what we were able to hear um, from Joe Biden on the economic policy front, uh, do you think what he uh, has put forward is favorable to the U.S. economy? I can tell you, we talked to so many folks on Wall Street, they are fixated on him raising the corporate tax rate to 28% from 21%, which he, he reiterated last night. So, you know, look, I think one of the most important statements last night, um, and it was a little bit of a, you know, cliche is, you know, I am the Democratic Party. A little bit of Joe Biden's kind of Al Haig, I am in charge here moment. But what that was suggesting was, you know, he is not on board for the you know, Bernie Sanders agenda. And he was interested in making it clear that he was not supporting Medicare for all. He was not supporting the kind of, you know, AOC vision of what a Green New Deal is. But when it came to tax policy, I think that was probably the one, like if you were trying to take notes on what they said, 21 to 28% was about the clearest um, single nugget of data that came through that debate. And so I do believe as we would move into a Biden administration, if that were to happen, you would see a reconciliation process, which is what allows the Senate to move forward with 50 votes on kind of economic issues, making some changes to the tax code. Um, there'll be a real debate about the timing of that. Um, I think there are gonna be some who argue that in the first instance, we should be just investing more and we should hold off on the kind of tax rate adjustment so a little farther into the recovery. 
but that's going to be one of the key debates. You know, I think we can all tonight with a hot mess. But if you had to pick a winner, did did one person do better than the other? Well, so look, you know, the, 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 kind of if, you, if you're worried about the kind of American entrepreneurial spirit, you can get T-shirts now that say, you know, will you shut up, man, and you know, stand up and stand by, right? So somehow Etsy has already leapt forward into uh, the breach. Um, but look, you know. I think what we learned last night is that the president's internal polling matches the external polling. They think that he's losing. And so they did what they could try to do to just change the arc of the debate by knocking Biden kind of off his emotional kind of, you know, foundation. That didn't work, right? So, um, you know, if a, a tie clearly went to Biden, and I think frankly that, um, you know, if you just step back, you know, I, li- I watch my kids watching the debate, right? Um, they just thought Trump was kind of a jerk. Right. I mean, you know, this is the 12 year old's perspective, you know, not whether a 12 year old's perspective reflects the general voting public or not. I'm not sure. But I don't think President Trump came across as a good guy. And at some level, a lot of people do vote on, you know, who would you rather have a, a drink with? Um, I don't think a lot of people would want to go drinking with President Trump after that uh, debate, though. I think many probably wish they were drinking during the debate. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.